You're listening to the Abounding Faith for Today podcast. Inspiration for you as you walk by abounding faith, hope, and love and live your God-given dreams. Welcome to episode 57 of the Abounding Faith for Today podcast. I'm your host, Nancy Gavilanes, and I'm so excited that you can join me today. Today, I'm going to be sharing parts of my testimony. Yes, you may have been wondering about my God story, and so today I'm going to be sharing parts of my story that I share in my MiraculousLovely.com blog post. I'll share a link in the show notes, but I'm going to be sharing parts of it to hopefully inspire and encourage you. We all have a story about how God met us, and so it's lovely to reflect on it and to share it with others. So here we go. My blog post is entitled, My True Gold Medal Moment. As a little girl, I wasn't interested in watching the Olympics. Even though my mom told my sister and me that it only took place every four years, I wanted to play with my dolls instead. As a teen, I became enthralled with the beauty and pageantry and the excitement of elite figure skating and gymnastics competitions. I was hooked on the Olympics. I inhaled every skating or gymnastics competition on TV. I'd record the competitions or exhibitions and watch them over and over again. I was mesmerized. I was so enamored with the Olympics that I started taking figure skating and gymnastics lessons. I'm so grateful to my parents for spending hours shuttling me to or from skating or gymnastics lessons. I actually got great driving practice with my dad on the way to the gym. My parents also enjoyed taking me to watch skating shows and buying me skating and gymnastics magazines and memorabilia. I didn't just want to be in the gym or rink, I wanted to meet all my favorite Olympians. Amazingly, I got to meet many of them during a prestigious gymnastics summer camp I went to. That wasn't enough. My dear dad also took us to watch our very first gymnastics Olympic trials. I think I went to watch two more Olympic trials live after that. That still wasn't enough. I dreamed of traveling to all the Olympic stadiums around the world. I was amazed that I got to visit the Olympic Stadium in Athens, Greece as a teen when my parents sent my sister and me on a trip to Europe through my high school. I still wanted more. My obsession with the world's biggest sporting event would compel me to study journalism. Although there were several reasons why I majored in journalism, my ultimate dream was to go to an Olympics as a reporter. Where did I get that audacious dream? I'm not sure, but I'd go on to meet and interview or photograph many of my favorite Olympians. You can see a few photos from what I call my quote-unquote Olympiac days in a short video that I'll link to in the show notes. Amazingly, my dream of going to an Olympics as a reporter and spectator came true very early on in my journalism career. I went to the Summer Olympics to chase elite athletes. God had a divine plot twist for me. God chased me down at the Olympics. My life has never been the same. I still write and speak about that moment because God met me in such a special way that day in Olympic Park. Here's my true gold medal moment. It was my last day at the Olympics. I had had a wonderful week attending some events, meeting some athletes, and soaking in all the sights and sounds. I loved seeing the world come together in peace for this global sporting event. I loved hearing the different languages being spoken and seeing the fans and athletes wearing their flags with pride and cheering for their home countries. I reveled in all the festivities I could. Making it to an Olympics was my gold medal moment, or so I thought. I had been captivated by making it to the games for so many years, but on my final day there, I still felt empty. I had gotten myself to the other side of the world and it still wasn't enough. I realized it would never be enough. On my last day there, I was at Olympic Park crying. I think all of my mom's and sister's prayers finally kicked in. God had finally gotten my attention. I realized I didn't deserve all these blessings and wonderful experiences. I had been running away from God. As I pursued my journalism career and my passion for sports, I had drifted further and further from God. I loved God, but I had tried to put him on a shelf. I was making my plans and asking God to bless them. I had my own dreams and desires and vision for my life. I had gotten myself pretty far. Notice all the eyes in my recent statements. 
I had been rebelling against God and not asking him for guidance and direction. Big mistake. There at Olympic Park, I was overwhelmed by God's grace and love and mercy. Without a pastor or evangelist near me, I surrendered my life to God. Looking back, that was my ultimate gold medal moment. Our dreams versus God dreams for us. There's nothing wrong with enjoying sports or excelling in your career. But if your identity, worth, and value are wrapped up in your interests, hobbies, career, title, or relationships, watch out. Does God have first place in your heart? God wants to be at the center of your life. God wanted to be at the center of my heart. At the Olympics and soon afterward, God graciously showed me that I had made idols out of sports and my career. That was a defining and sacred moment when God called me at the Olympics. He later called me to lay down my journalism career. Please note, he doesn't ask everyone to do that. I've been on a faith journey ever since. That journey has been long and winding, but has included many adventures, including going to Israel years ago, as well as going on five short-term missions trips to five countries. It's also included serving as a prayer counselor at a Billy Graham crusade and a Luis Palau festival, and training as a volunteer chaplain. I'm now using my writing and speaking gifts to encourage people as they walk by abounding faith, hope, and love and dare to live their God-given dreams. You can learn more at aboundingfaith.com. I've spoken to a group of Christians working at the United Nations, students at a Christian college, given my brief testimony at an evening service at Times Square Church, and more. I've also hosted a few of my own events and am now a contributing writer for Our Daily Bread Ministries. I'm also a Bible school instructor. Surprisingly enough, one of my recent students was a two-time Olympian. Only God could orchestrate that. None of these were my idea. I've just continued to try to follow as the Lord leads. I'm honored to be the author of six Christian living books and devotionals. I write about how God called me to follow him in my new book, God-Given Dreams, Six Ways to Live Your Divine Purpose, from Nav Press. It's available wherever books are sold. I've also written about it in By Faith, Adventures and Reflections on Walking with God Here and Abroad, available on Amazon. After God met me at a Summer Olympics, he allowed me to go to a Winter Olympics as a reporter and spectator. That was another incredible experience, but by then, God was Lord of my life. I'm so grateful that I can now enjoy the Olympics like a regular fan at home. I still get excited and cheer for the athletes to do their best. I admire their hard work and dedication. But my identity isn't wrapped around who I'm meeting or interviewing. I'm sharing parts of my story to inspire you and as a cautionary tale. We can have dreams for our life, but have we checked in with God? That's why my latest book is titled God-Given Dreams. God has even better dreams for us than we could ever hope or imagine. Just check out Ephesians 2 verses 20 to 21. God has given us gifts, talents, and abilities. God has good works ordained for us to do, as we read in Ephesians 2.10. Have you asked God how he wants you to use those gifts, talents, and abilities to honor him? I love when athletes thank God right when they win a competition. I'll stop there. You can read more of the blog post at the link that I'll leave in the show notes. But again, I just want to share that It's so important to be prayerful and to ask God what his dream is for our life. It's so important to have God at the center of our heart. Yes, having dreams and goals and visions and plans for our lives, that's important, that's beautiful, that's lovely, but we need to be consulting with God. He's our maker and our creator. He's our heavenly father, and he has even bigger desires for us. One of the main desires is for us to be conformed into the image of his son, Jesus Christ. That's going to take our lifetime. Thank God, God is patient with us and he doesn't give up on us. I hope my story inspires you. I hope you'll take some time, even after listening to this podcast, to be still before the Lord and ask him what his plans and goals and desires are for your life. Thank him for the gifts and talents and abilities he's given you. Thank him for the air in your lungs and all the different blessings that he's given you, that you can serve him and honor him and worship him and praise him. Continue to ask him for guidance and direction. He will show you the way. 
Continue reading your Bible and praying and he will speak to you. If you have been running away from God like I was, I want to encourage you to run towards him. We can't outrun God's love for us. He chased me down when I was all the way on the other side of the world. He can find you wherever you are. There's no place that you can go that's too far for God to reach you. If even now you feel that God seems far away, I encourage you to call out to him. He's right there. He's closer than our next breath. If you wonder what God is like, I want to encourage you to read the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Read the Gospels in the Bible and find out about Jesus because Jesus is the exact representation of God. He's 100% God, 100% man. So as you read about his life and his ministry and his teachings, as you see how he lived here on earth, you'll see the exact picture of God. Jesus is God in the flesh, right? Emmanuel, God with us. So whether you've never read the Gospels or you haven't read them in a long time, go ahead and read them or listen to an audio version of the Bible and really listen with an open heart and take a fresh look at those stories. There's power in the Word of God. Jesus is the Word of God. Again, He's the Word made flesh. So I encourage you, to abide in Christ, to have a strong relationship with Jesus, to know your Savior and your Lord. And I encourage you to make a decision to live for Him, to live for Christ, to honor God, to glorify Him with all your talents, gifts, abilities, your time, your treasure. As the Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. So we are to seek the Lord. God does the rest. Amen? Yes. So there's a practical side that we can do. We can continue to learn and grow and develop in our gifts and talents and abilities, but we can offer them up and hold them loosely and see how God wants to use us. That's his decision. We'll talk more about this in another episode, but as I mentioned, I just wanted to share parts of my story. I hope they encourage you. I know that you have a story as well. I hope you share that with others as well about how God called you, how he met you, how he chased you down. Maybe it's not so dramatic. Maybe he just met you in the midnight hour in your bedroom. And that's a beautiful story as well. I hope you'll take time to reflect on how God has worked in your life. And again, if you feel far from God, I pray that you would just call out to him. He's right there. He is waiting for you with arms wide open to turn to him or to return to him wherever you are. Okay, let me pray for you as usual. So Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Father, for every single person listening, Lord, whether they're near or far, whether they listen to this right away or months or years down the road. I pray that you will bless them, visit them, remind them how much you love them, remind them that you have a call and purpose for their life, draw them to you no matter where they find themselves, Lord, No pit is too deep for you that you can't reach us. I thank you, Lord, that your arm is not too short. You can reach us wherever we are. You love us and you have a plan and purpose for our life. Thank you, Father, that you see us and you hear us and you know us. You know us by name. You knit us together in our mother's womb. So we thank you, Father, for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you will do. And we thank you for who you are. You're awesome. You're amazing. You're mighty. You're all powerful. You're sovereign. You're in control. You're on the throne and nothing can thwart your plans. We thank you and we ask this all in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I hope this episode has inspired and encouraged you. If so, please make sure to subscribe to this podcast so that you don't miss an episode. I'll also leave links to my books that I mentioned in the show notes. It's always A delight to be with you. Thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, God bless. You've been listening to the Abounding Faith for Today podcast. For more encouragement on your faith journey, visit AboundingFaith.com and follow Abounding Faith on social media.